everybody welcome back to my channel thank you so much for joining me today I hope everybody's doing well I hope you're taking care of yourself being kind to yourself sometimes we end up doing things for other people and we end up neglecting ourselves so it's important that you take care of yourself and be kind to yourself and it's important to do the things that make you feel good and I know you love to make jewelry and I know that's why you're here today and if you love that necklace in the introduction then you're gonna love this tutorial one of the reasons I use the desert scenes in the intro is because the name of the box is Sahara Desert and it's the September edition of Diddy's Deluxe Speed Box I know what you're saying it's already October I do apologize, but I've been really, really backed up. I've been doing the best I can to catch up with everything ever since I had the cast removed. But you know what they say, it's better late than never. So anyway, guys, if you love soft, neutral colors, you're gonna love that necklace. And we're gonna be using a material called Sari Silk Ribbon. I don't use fabric very much in my jewelry making. I usually stick to metals, but I thought I would use it today because the color of the ribbon is so pretty. I would imagine that it would be a little difficult to wear a necklace like that if you wear lotion or if you sweat a lot. So maybe this necklace wouldn't work for you, but you can always use chain or leather if you don't want to use sari ribbon. My goal is to inspire you and you don't necessarily have to make the exact same piece. You can compromise and just make it your own. As long as my tutorials inspire you, that's all I care about. And by the way, guys, one of the things I love about what I do and about being on this platform, YouTube, is that I get a lot of comments from viewers expressing gratitude because some of my viewers can't get out and so this is the only way that they can get kind of like a social connection with people whether it's me or whether it's people who leave comments which is one of the reasons why I really love it when you guys leave comments but anyway it really makes me very happy and it's very rewarding to learn that I actually help a lot of people whether it's through jewelry making or whether it's because I feel a social void in their lives I really appreciate that and it makes me feel great so anyway getting back to the necklace I absolutely love the desert colors, I really do. And the colors in the September box were absolutely gorgeous. And as I was making the necklace and working with the sari silk ribbon, it reminded me of my travels. When I was 16 years old, I actually went to Cairo and we took a trip, it was a bus trip from uh, Port Said, I think it was, all the way down to Cairo. And I remember seeing the desert and I think Cairo is right up against the edge of the Sahara Desert. So it was a really incredible adventure for me. I really loved it. I was only 16 years old, but I remember every bit of it. And yes, I did see the pyramids of Giza. How can you not see the pyramids if you go to Cairo? I was very lucky because my father organized the trip. He was the adventurous one in the family. And if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have made it to that part of the world. Now, having said that, I've also driven through Death Valley. And one of my dreams is to go to Arizona. I've often fantasized about living down there because of the climate. I like dry weather. So anyway, guys, those are a few fun facts about me. One of these days, I'll have to make a video talking about my experiences and all the travels I've made through my lifetime. But anyway, I'm very anxious to get started with this tutorial. But before we start, let me remind you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. And don't forget that I also leave a list of all the materials down below in the description section of this video, along with timestamps in case you want to skip forward to any portion of the video. Video. And like I said, we're going to be using the beads from Didi's Deluxe Bead Box for the month of September. And if you're not familiar with that box, I'll leave a link down below so you can go check it out. Now today's going to be a little different because I'm going to be doing a mini unboxing at the beginning of the video and then we'll jump right into the tutorial. So without any further ado, let's go ahead, turn the camera around and we'll get started. And here we have Didi's Deluxe Bead Box for the month of September. And don't you just love this message? It says, Inspiring Your Creative Senses. And of course, I always have to show you this sticker down here. It says, warning, opening this package will cause extreme happiness. And it certainly does. Let's go ahead and open up the box. I love how they wrap it up in tissue and I love the little sticker. And let's take a look at this note. It looks like the theme is the Sahara Desert and it reads, Our September edition will take you on a trip far away into North Africa, visiting the Sahara Desert's breathtaking scenery. With soft neutral tones from pale pinks and sandy beige to sunset reds, create a Saharan desert adding hints of black to the dancing chandeliers. That sounds really, really beautiful. And here's a list of all the materials as you can see. And down at the bottom it says, I hope this month's edition has inspired you. Happy beading, Stella. And here's her email address, her website address, and her Facebook group address. Let's go ahead and see what's in the box. Look at these gorgeous desert colors, guys. These are so beautiful. They're very neutral and very earthy looking. And as you can see, the metal is a silver tone. Let me go ahead and arrange everything. I'm going to remove all the beads from the packaging and I'll lay it out and we'll take a look. And here are all the items. And guys, I was so impressed at the amount of beads in this month's box. 
I almost didn't have enough room on my mat to lay everything out. As you can see, we have all kinds of goodies here. It's an absolutely stunning collection and the colors are just really, really gorgeous. I don't even know where to start, but right off the bat, this one here really stands out for me. This is such a gorgeous strand, guys. Oh my goodness. This is called Natural Crazy Lace Agate Gemstones and there are 10 pieces as you can see. Look at these beautiful beads. Oh my gosh. These are so gorgeous. As you can see, they're rectangular in shape, but they actually have some faceting as well. I'm not sure if that shows up on camera, but hopefully you can see it. And I'm seeing all kinds of colors. I'm seeing sand. I'm seeing like a yellowish ochre color or a mustardy color. I'm seeing a little bit of reddish as well and some gray tones. These are so stunning. And they're a very nice size as well. They're 15 by 12 millimeters. I love this strand. And it looks like we have two other strands of gemstones as well. Let's take a look at this one here. These are eight millimeters in size and it's red coral brecciated jasper. There are 23 pieces in this strand. It's a seven and a half inch strand. And I'm loving the beautiful red tones, but I'm also seeing a little bit of mustard, which matches this color here. And I'm also seeing gray tones and pink tones and definitely coral. But even though there are a lot of colors, it's actually very neutral looking. I love it. Let's take a look at this one now. As you can see, these are smaller, they're six millimeters in size, and this is called Natural Red Line Jasper. And I don't know if you can see the striations on the beads, they're so pretty. And once again, I'm seeing a lot of red tones, but I'm also seeing tan and some gray tones as well, very earthy looking. And of course, they look wonderful with everything you see down here. Now these are really cute. These are very tiny beads, as you can see. These are called Strawberry Shaped Faceted Crystals, and obviously the color is black, they're very opaque. They have some faceting, which makes them very, very sparkly. I've seen this shape before. It's like a pear shape, but kind of a rounded pear shape. I love these. And I can see why they included black, because this component here has a black onyx cabochon. Let's take a look at it. It's 60 millimeters wide, and it's in an antique silver color, as you can see. It's a chandelier pendant. And as you can see, there are seven loops at the bottom and two at the top. And what an interesting selection to have an antique silver component with all of these earth tones. My natural instinct would have been to go with something more earthy looking like bronze or copper. But I think the silver is going to look really nice because I'm seeing some gray tones in these beads here. So I'm going to have to see what I can come up with. Let me show you the back. There's the back. And um, I just love it. It's really pretty. Look at the gorgeous design. I love this. And of course, I love these beautiful chandelier connectors down here. Let me show you one of them. As you can see, it has three loops at the bottom. It has a beautiful swirly design. These are called Fancy Swirl Chandelier Connectors. And as you can see, they're in an antique silver color. They measure 20 by 18 millimeters. So these are going to come in really handy. I love using these kinds of connectors. And we get some bead caps, as you can see. They're relatively small, but I think they would fit the six millimeter beads. They're actually flower bead caps. They're in an antique silver color. And they have a beautiful filigree design. Very nice. And we get 30 pieces. Now these are really cool. These are called Smoky Gray Crystal Bell Caps. They measure 10 millimeters and they are bell cap shaped. So I don't know how I'm going to use these, but maybe they can go on some of these beads here or maybe the eight millimeter Jasper beads. I'm not sure. I'm going to, have to think about this one. But anyway, we get four of them and they're very sparkly and very beautiful. And here we have two soldered rings. These are also in an antique silver color. They measure 10 millimeters and they have a twisted rope kind of a design. And they're soldered, so that means when you have a ring this size, you definitely want it to be closed all the way around. And these beads here are stunning. They're so reflective. They're in a kind of a smoky color, I would say. And actually the description does say that they're smoky gray, chunky glass beads. There are 15 pieces and guys, the reflection on these beads is out of this world. I'm not sure if it's the plating or if it's in the glass or the faceting, but these beads are so beautiful. I'm gonna have to take these outside and see how they reflect in the sunshine. I wanted to show you what they look like threaded on. Now I took a look at the bead itself and they're all the same, but they look different because of the way they're shaped. So it depends on how they sit on the strand or wherever you thread them. And also it depends on which way you thread them. So if I thread them like this, for example, then they look quite different and they sit differently. So anyway, these are very interesting because even though they're shaped exactly identical to each other, 
They look different because of the way they rotate on the strand. I'm really excited about using this one. I love this kind of bead. And here we have a hook and eye clasp. As you can see, it's made up of two pieces, the hook and the eye portion. And I really like the little bumpy design on each one. It's very attractive looking and it really adds to the hook and eye. I've had hook and eye clasps before that are kind of plain, but this one's a little bit fancier. I like that. And here we have a beautiful mix of Indian glass beads. The color of this mix is desert sand and you can see why. There are various shades of sand, but I'm actually seeing some red tones as well. But what's really interesting about this mix is all the different shapes. Look at this guys, look at all the different shapes. And this is just some of them. There are still some more down there. I'm trying to see if there are two that are the same, but I don't think I'm seeing it. Maybe these two. These two look like they might be the same and some of these peach colored ones, perhaps. But for the most part, they're all different and that's really, really cool. I love that. And here are some of them threaded on. I think what I like the best about these beads are the colors. They're very neutral and very soft. And of course the sand tones really go well with everything down there. Some of them are actually matte and some are glossy. So even the finish is a little bit different on each one. These are so beautiful. I love it that each one is different. I think I might use these in a necklace. I'll have to think about it. They're really, really pretty. Let's take a look at this beautiful silk ribbon. Of course the color is sand and it matches really beautifully with everything down there, especially these beads here. And we get 36 inches, so that's quite a bit to work with. I haven't used silk ribbon very much, but I know it can make a piece look very boho-like. So maybe that's what I'll do because this pendant is kind of boho looking. I'll have to think about it. I love it. This whole collection is gorgeous. I'm very impressed. So anyway guys, I hope you're as impressed as I am. I think this month's box is stunning. There are so many things to work with here, so many different textures, and the colors are so beautiful and neutral. So now I'm going to sit down and play with these beads for a little bit, and hopefully I'll come up with a design. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, and I've selected the beads that we're going to be using today. As you can see, I have the beautiful Indian glass mix of beads here. I also have the strand of natural red line jasper beads in the 6mm size. I have the two antique silver twisted soldered rings. We're also going to be using the sari silk ribbon and we'll be using the fancy hook clasp as well. And here are some additional items we're going to be using. Now these did not come in the box, but they're pretty easy to find. If you go on Etsy or Amazon, you should be able to find them. As you can see, I have some flat head pins here. They measure about two inches. I have some jump rings. These are about five millimeters in size. I have two flower bead caps and I don't remember what size these are, but I'll leave the dimensions down in the description section of this video. I did find them on Amazon though. And as you can see, they come in four different colors silver, gold, bronze, and copper. And here I have two bales with loops on them. I actually got those at a bead show. As you can see, I have a whole packet of them, but you can find them on Amazon as well. If you search for bead hangers or charm hangers or Tibetan bales with loops, you should be able to find them. And again, I'll leave the dimensions down in the description section of this video. What I like about these is that they have a large hole, so I should be able to fit the sari ribbon through that. And here I have some six millimeter size metal beads and they're Tibetan style beads. And honestly, I don't remember where I got those. But again, if you go on Etsy or Amazon and you search for Tibetan style spacer beads, you should be able to find them. Today we're going to be doing some Y wrapping. I haven't been able to do it lately because of my wrist, but I'm going to try to do it today. And we'll be using some 22 gauge wire. This is by Beadsmith and the color is titanium. We're going to start by building the lower strand and I'm going to select about six beads from this mix. My plan is to make the lower strand between five and a half and six inches long. So let me go ahead and select the beads that I think will look nice. As you can see, I picked six beads out and I think these are going to look really nice at the bottom of the necklace. Let me go ahead and remove the rest and we'll get started. We're going to start by cutting ourselves some wire. It's a good idea to straighten your wire out before you cut it off the spool. And you're going to want pieces that are relatively long because some of these beads are pretty big. So I'm going to cut myself pieces that are about three and a half inches long for the large beads. For these smaller beads, you'll need less. If you're new, you definitely want longer pieces. You don't want to be struggling with short pieces because we're going to be doing some wrap loops. If you're advanced, you could probably get away with less. As 
As you can see, I've cut myself six pieces of wire. And here are my two rings. We're going to be attaching the strand to the rings. Let's go ahead and get started. The best way to do this, guys, is to get the bead and thread it on and slide it down to the middle of your wire to see where it is that you need to kink. So I'm going to kink it right here. Remove the bead. And now with a set of round nose pliers, I'm going to grab the loop like this. And I want the first loop to be relatively big because I'm going to be attaching it to the ring. So I'm going to place my wire down at the fat end of the nose. And now I'm going to take that wire, wrap it around, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, remove the pliers, and this is what you should have. Now before we do any wraps, I'm going to open it up a little bit so that I can insert the ring. The ring is relatively thick, so it needs to be able to fit through like this. Let me go ahead and close it up again. So this is what you should have. I'm going to flip it around. And now to create wraps, what I like to do is grab the loop with a set of uh, skinny pliers. And these are actually crimping pliers, but I like using the tips because they grab really well. So I'm going to grab it like this. And now with another set of pliers, I'm going to grab the short tail and do a couple of wraps. Now you can do more than a couple of wraps. It's completely up to you how many wraps you want to do. I like to do a couple. Remove the pliers. As you can see, I have excess wire I need to cut off. So I'm going to come in here with my flush cutters. And now there's a little tail there that I need to tuck in. So let me go ahead and tuck it in. And now let's thread the bead on. One thing you do need to watch out for guys are the holes. Some of these beads have large holes so you want to make sure that your wrap doesn't slide through. If you see a bead that has a large hole you may need to use a spacer bead or something to stop the wrap from sliding through the hole or just select beads that don't have large holes. So now we're going to grab the wire at the top of the bead like this. And you do want to line up the loops. So I'm going to line up my bottom loop so that it's oriented properly. And now let's kink the wire away like this. Switch to this portion of the pliers now. This loop is going to be smaller. It doesn't have to be as big as this one. And now I'm going to take the tail and wrap it around the nose. Flip the pliers around. Continue to wrap to the back. Remove the pliers. And now we're going to do some wraps at this end. So once again, I'm grabbing the loop with my skinny pliers. And now I'm going to grab the tail with my other set and do a couple of wraps. And just like before, you're going to cut off the excess and tuck in the little end. So this is what you should have. Pretty easy. So now we're going to attach the next bead. Once again, you want to estimate where the bead is going to go and go ahead and kink your wire right above where the bead is going to go like this. Switch to this portion of your pliers, the same section where you were before. Take the tail and wrap around the nose like this. Flip the pliers around. Continue to wrap the tail to the back like this. Remove the pliers. And now we're going to insert this loop into the one that we just created like this. And now we're going to grab the loop with the skinny pliers. And with your other pliers, you're going to grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess. Tuck in the little end. And now we're going to thread the bead on. Grab the wire at the top of the bead. Line up your bottom loop. Kink it. 
Switch to this portion of your pliers, wrap the tail around, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. And now we're going to do some wraps here. So I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers, grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. I'm going to cut off the excess and tuck in the little end. And this is what we have so far. So I'm going to continue attaching the rest of these beads. I'm going to speed up the film and I'll meet you back. As you can see I've connected all the beads and I did want to show you something that's very very important guys okay you need to make sure that the orientation of the loops are correct so that the rings sit properly on your chest let me show you what I mean by that if you look at this bead here the loops are sitting vertically they're sitting perpendicular to the mat and then the loops on this bead are sitting horizontal these are vertical these are horizontal these are vertical and this one here should be horizontal or parallel to the mat but we have the ring here so now we need to make a little adjustment this one can be horizontal but this one needs to be vertical i hope that makes sense let me go ahead and show you i'm simply going to grab this loop like this and now i'm going to grab this other one and turn it so that it's perpendicular to the one on the left so let me go over this again the loops on this bead here are vertical because they need to be attached to the ring the loops on this one are horizontal these are vertical horizontal vertical and this one's a little different this one has a loop that's horizontal on the left and one that's vertical on the right and the reason I did that again is because I wanted the rings to sit properly on the chest I hope that's clear so this lower strand is done and now we're going to work on the upper strand we're going to need these beautiful six millimeter jasper beads I don't know how many we're going to need just yet I'll just pull out a few let me measure this lower strand. This lower strand is a little bit more than five and a half inches, which is what I had planned originally. So the upper strand is going to be shorter, obviously. I'm going to try to make it around four and three quarters. And once again, I'm going to cut some wire and we're going to be doing some wrap loops. Obviously, since these beads are smaller, you're going to need shorter pieces. I'm going to recommend between two and a half and three inch pieces. Three inches if you're a beginner. Two and a half if you're advanced. You may be able to get away with less, but guys, I don't like to struggle with wire, honestly. I've done it before with very short pieces and it, it just takes longer. I know some of you may think it's a waste, but I'd rather be working efficiently than to struggle with short pieces of wire. Now I am going to cut one long piece to attach to the ring because that loop needs to be bigger. Not too big, but enough to fit the ring through. Let me just move this out of the way and here's my wire. Now we need to attach the first bead to one of the rings but I'm going to do that at the end after I connect some of these beads. So let me go ahead and speed up the film and I'll meet you back. Okay, I'm back as you can see I've connected some of the beads and I don't want to go any further until I measure it so let me go ahead and do that and right now this portion measures about three and a quarter inches and I need about four and three quarters so I think if I attach another two beads to the ends and make big loops that should be sufficient let me go ahead and do that so just like before I'm going to grab the wire at the top of the bead kink it move to the wide portion of my pliers like this because I want the loop to be nice and big wrap the tail around flip the pliers around continue to wrap to the back 
and before I wrap it I need to attach it to the ring so let me go ahead and do that actually let me open up that loop a little bit first it's a little difficult to slide the ring in when the loop is closed let me go ahead and try this again so there it is and now I'm going to grab that loop with my skinny pliers and grab the tail and do a couple of wraps Let me cut off the excess and of course you need to tuck the little end in. So that looks pretty good as you can see. I need to attach one more at this end and that should be the right length. I went ahead and connected a regular component there without the big loop because I felt like I needed an extra bead there. So this is a bit of a trial and error guys. You're not going to know the final measurement until you actually do your wrap loops because there are so many things that can affect the length. Let me just go ahead and measure it. It measures about four inches right now and I need four and three quarters. So now this last bead is going to have a regular loop at one end and a large loop at the other end so I can attach it to the ring. Let me go ahead and do that. As you can see I've created a large loop at this end. Now before I attach it, I need to make sure that the loops are sitting properly and they're not all tangled up. And just like we did on this one, we may need to turn that loop. It all depends on how it attaches to the ring. So let me take a look now. This one's vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. So this is going to have the same issue as this one because this loop needs to be vertical. But before I turn it, I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the ring. So let me open up this loop connected to the ring and now I'm going to do a wrap loop so I'm going to grab it with my skinny pliers and with my other pliers I'll do my wraps let me cut off the excess and now I'm going to tuck it in So let's have a look now. I took a look at the loops and this one needs to be turned this way. So I'm going to grab this other side with another set of pliers. And now I need to turn this loop this way like this. And by doing that guys it really helps for the whole thing to drape properly. So this is what we have and I think it looks adorable. So now we're going to move on to the next step. We're going to be attaching the sari ribbon. You're going to need your two spacer beads with loops or bales with loops. And basically what I'm going to do is bring my ends together and find the center of the ribbon. And I'm simply going to cut it like that. So now we have two pieces. Each one is 18 inches long. And now I'm going to take one of the pieces and thread it through the ring like this. It couldn't be any easier. Now this next part is a little bit tricky because we need to fit both of these um, ribbons through the bale or through the spacer bead. Obviously the first one's easy because there's lots of room. The best way to thread it through is to use some needle nose pliers like this. And now I'm going to take this other end and thread it through the spacer bead. So let me grab the end with my needle nose pliers and push it through the best way I can. Now you're going to slide that bead all the way down like this. Now you do want to make sure that your ends are pretty even and mine look like they're okay. This bead may slide a little bit. It depends on how big your hole is. If that happens guys you can always just make a knot but I'm not going to make any knots because I don't mind that there's a little give there and it slides around a little bit. I think that's cute. It's not going to go anywhere because we're going to secure the other end with the uh, bead cap that I showed you earlier. Plus the bead cap will have a wrapped loop so that'll help as well. Now this next part is pretty important because you need to figure out how long you want your necklace. And the best way to do that is to take this to the mirror and hold it up to your chest. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay I'm back and I've determined that I need 5 inches worth of ribbon which will make the necklace approximately 18 inches long by the time I add the clasp and everything. So let me go ahead and measure 5 inches. This is the scary part because once you cut the ribbon that's it guys. So I'm going to cut it right here. 
So here it is now, five inches long. Now we're going to finish off this end. I have a head pin here and I've threaded some six pound fire line on a needle as you can see. I have a knot at this end. So now what you want to do is you want to grab your ribbon. Make sure your two ends are identical. And now you want to take your two ends and open them up like this. It's a little tricky, but you want to open them up and place them up against each other like this. Take your head pin and place it in the middle. And now you're going to wrap the ribbon around your head pin like this. Don't be too concerned initially that it's not perfect because we're going to be securing it with thread. So let's go ahead and do that. You're just going to go through the ribbon with your fire line like this. And now I'm going to go again from the back and pull. And we're just going to keep doing that. Keep going through the layers until you feel that, um, that it's secured properly. Make sure you pull your thread so that it's nice and secure. And then when you think you've done enough, you want to test it. Try to pull that pin, make sure that it's not coming out. And this one looks pretty good. So now the next step is to make a little knot. So I'm creating a loop here and I'm going to go through the loop and pull. And let me do another one. I'm going to cut off the excess. Let me trim off some of this ribbon. And now before we go any further, let's test it. That looks pretty good. It's pretty secure. It's not going to go anywhere. So now I think what I'm going to do is add a bead to this end. And it's just going to be a six millimeter Jasper bead like this. Now this pin is very hard and very thick, so I'm not going to do a wrap loop. I'm going to do a simple loop. So I'm just going to kink it like this. I'm going to cut off the excess wire, leaving about maybe half an inch, maybe a little bit less. It's up to you how big you want your loop. And I'm going to make a loop. I'm going to place my pliers, my round nose pliers at the end, making sure that it's flush. And I'm going to form a loop. You want to make sure it's nice and closed, just like that. And now I'm going to add this portion of the hook and eye clasp. So I'm going to open it up, slide it in, and close it up. So this end is done, as you can see, and it looks really, really cute. I like it. Now what I want to do is add a little charm to this. So I'm going to use one of these metal beads. And once again, I'm going to use one of the flat head pins. So now I'm going to make a simple loop. And now I'm going to attach it to this charm holder. And you want to make sure you close it really well. So this end is done and I think it looks adorable. I'm going to do the exact same thing now to this other side and I'll meet you back. So here's the finished necklace and I think it's adorable. It's definitely a little different than what I normally make. I love to be challenged with materials that I don't normally use and I'll be honest with you guys, I don't use sari ribbon very much. I think I've only used it like maybe three or four times in my lifetime, but I love the finished product and I think this necklace is really cute. As you can see, I added the other end of the hook and eye clasp and I also added an extender chain with a six millimeter Jasper bead and I'm pretty happy with this necklace. I think it turned out nice. So now let me go ahead and put it on and show you what it looks like.
Well, what do you think? Do you like this necklace? Isn't it pretty? I love the colors. And actually the sari silk ribbon feels really, really comfortable. But like I said in the beginning of the video, guys, if you don't want to use the sari silk ribbon, you can make the exact same necklace with chain or leather. I think it would actually look really beautiful with leather cord. You'd have to finish it off differently and use cord end findings. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I certainly had a lot of fun. I'm glad I was able to do the mini unboxing to give you a glimpse of the entire September edition. And of course, I'm super happy that I was able to make the tutorial as well. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.